Hey everybody, Russ Quick Electric here today, and before we get started on the video of the customizable dice simulator, I want to take a minute to talk about the server that I have recently launched to help the channel along with allowing everyone to kind of showcase their own builds, ask questions, and contribute to one another. I've got a small clip here with a tour of the area as well as some fun activities that we have on the server including random spawns of heli and PvP. The server is totally customized with mods to prevent griefing and I hope to see you guys soon. The information can be found in the Discord. Enjoy! As we start off this video, a lot of people have asked me how I come up with these ideas or what the reasoning is behind these ideas. So for this particular schematic of the customizable dice simulator, I have a practical use for it in which I'm creating a Ring of Death Wheel of Fortune game, essentially where the ring will have six players sitting down in a circle all facing each other, and the host in the middle will pull the switch and the wheel of death will spin roll a dice between six land on a player after the first initial two spins and then simply murder them until one person remains it will eliminate the number from the pool you'll see that the uh only the initial of the wiring from my prior videos has been done and that's where the ideas come from so if we come over to my creation lab over here you'll see the thought process behind it with a number of iterations where I first begin with what I've previously done, which is simply understanding how a RAND works, progressing into using a prior build of my loop and seeing if I can somehow forge it into a way that gives me a six cycle roll of the RAND into the build. Had difficulties with that, so then I opted for a pyramid-esque kind of build, which has been unwired since I realized how much work and wiring and ineffective it was. Then we moved on over into this atrocity which was six independent rands that would toggle counters to a summation of a dice roll which I wasn't happy with either because as you see it's a slew of a mess but it was very close to what I was looking for. And finally we ended up with the final solution which is a loop variant of a single rand that outputs the customizable variable into the dice roll. So you'll see it because I can set the target to six here and then when I tar like toggle the actual timer, you'll see the roll count in the bottom right and the top left shows the actual die hit. So it will roll six 50-50 shots essentially of the rand switch and then output after six tries what the total count was, which in this instance it was two. And if I'd showcase it again, it could be the same, it could not, but it has a variable roll of between 0 and 6. Now, for this upcoming game, it will obviously have to have a base bet of 1, but you'll see this time it rolled 3. So let's get on to the building of it. For this build, we'll be using 6 electrical branches, 4 timers, 1 ore switch, 2 counters, 1 memory cell, 1 RAND cell, and 2 splitters. As we get into the build, we're going to set up our defined power, which is used by two primary splitters as well as a direct input through a branch. So let's go ahead and wire that up right now. Splitter 1, splitter 2, and a branch. Now I am using generators again, as this is more so a creative build versus a realistic vanilla build. While it can be done, it is... Uh, a bit more expensive and you will need to use either a wind turbine or an excessive amount of solar panels to generate the amount of power output required. So we're going to wire in the generator 1 to splitter 1, generator 2 to splitter 2, and generator 3 to branch 1. 
continuing the build, we're going to follow the right side of the schematic to begin with, which showcases a timer into another branch. So we'll have the timer here, and we'll have the other branch directly above. We'll go ahead and wire those both up. We're going to use the branch out function of this electrical branch, and we're going to have the output of the timer to this branch. Now we're going to set this branch to a power of 15 to allow output, and this port is going to remain open for now. As we move over from the right side of the schematic, we're going to see that we have a counter, followed by another branch, followed by our memory cell. Now this counter, the purpose of it is to set the amount of rules that will be used in the build. So we're going to have the counter, progressing into the branch, progressing into a memory cell. Now wiring this, we're going to take one of the power outputs from our splitter, come across and wire up directly into it. We're going to have the pass through of the counter go into the electrical branch, and we're going to have the branch out of the electrical branch come up and into the set function of the memory cell. As for the power out of this branch, it's going to come right back down into our first counter, clear counter. Now as we move to the left, you'll see that we have a electrical branch and or switch. So we'll go ahead and grab those. We have the electrical branch directly alongside here, as well as the OR switch. Now the OR switch will be receiving power from our splitter into input A. Move that over just a little bit more. There we go. We will have the input B coming from the branch out of this branch, like so. We will have the power out of this branch going into the increment counter of the toggled counter where we can set the count. Now this portion is almost complete. We will have the power out of the OR switch coming right up here as a power in to the memory cell. As we progress left again on the schematic that I've linked in the description, you'll see that we have the timer into two branches. So we have a timer, branch, and branch. We'll have this timer placed right there. Branch above it, and another branch above it. The timer here will be receiving power once again from the splitter. The timer output will be going into the branch above. We're going to set this branch to a power of 15, and the branch above it to a power of 5. We're going to have the branch out of this one go directly into the one above of it. And then we're going to have the power out of this come down and across, like so, into this branch. Now that this timer is placed, we can wire the memory cell which we're going to have the inverted output come down and across into the toggle on of the timer. We're going to be sure to set the timer to one second a piece. So you'll see that as this continues on, it's going to start toggling. We're going to set a time of one here, and we're going to set a one, time of one here as well. We'll disconnect this for now. Wait for this to time out and then change it to a 1. You'll see that the loop progresses on until it's completely wired. So we're going to leave this portion disconnected until we finish the wiring elsewhere. We're going to have the branch out of our right side branch come up into the reset function of our memory cell. This second power out will be the one that's progressing out into our final counter. So as we rewire this to the inverted output, you'll see that it's now a complete loop. Which stops once it reaches the desired amount on the counter, which we had set to 10. We're going to reset that to a 6. Continuing on with the build, we have two more timers. 
which has been used in prior videos, such as my automatic Russian roulette, to activate a simultaneously set-reset function of the RANS switch. So we're going to go ahead and wire both of these up from Splitter. This will receive power, as well as this. Like so. This branch will be our trigger for both timer A and timer B. Like so. And then what we have left is our RAN switch as well as our counter. So we're going to place our RAN switch directly above so as to keep a somewhat organized pathway, and then the counter directly above that. The RAND power out will be going to our increment counter, because as it has a successful hit, we want this to increment up. Let's make that a little bit cleaner. Like so. We're going to have the set function come from the output of the timer, as well as the reset function come from the output of the other timer. The power in from our RAND gate is going to come from our last slot on our splitter, which we'll go ahead and wire around this way. And then last but not least, we have the final branch out over here, which will be going into our counter power. Let's make sure we get a decent wire path here. Like so. Now, the, I'm sorry, this will be coming from the clear counter, and then the branch beneath that will be going to the power end. So this will be our clear counter. And then the power in will be coming from the branch beneath this, which was at the beginning. It's a power source. And you'll see that now everything is lit up and wired. As with any build, it's practical and important to make sure that it does indeed work as intended. So we've set the timer durations, which these need to be set as well. You're going to set to a duration of one and a duration of one. Every timer should now be set to a duration of one which they are. You're going to set the target of your dice roll, which we're using a six-sided, and then we can activate using this timer. You'll see that it will run six loops, and if any of the 50-50s hit, they will increment up on that counter. So we can showcase it again. Now, this brings about a good point where when you're wiring, there are current bugs with the game where sometimes your set toggleables, such as a memory cell and RAN cell, are not operating as they should. And you'll see that pretty good indicator, while it could occur, is that this is not toggling one single time, even with power inputs from both hitting set reset. So what you end up wanting to do is picking up that RAND, placing it again, and rewiring it. Now there is no known cause as to why this occurs currently, but that's why it's important to test. And I get lots of questions from people as to why their creations aren't working. I follow the guide exactly, and it's still not working. Well, this is it. Almost every person that I've helped so far, the error lies in the game and not user. So I always suggest going to the portion of the build that is not currently working and making sure that it is actually toggleable. So we'll bring this back up and out into increment counter. And then let's give it another go. So I cut the recording there simply because I kept running into the same issue. And in order to resolve it, I had to completely remove the old RAN switch, spawn in a new one, and then place it, which has resolved the issue. You'll see that the wiring is exactly the same. The RAND power in is powered by the splitter. The set is toggled by the timer one, the reset by timer two, output two, and then the power out is still going into the increment counter. So as I test the device this time, you'll see that the counter reset, and it has the possibility of actually hitting a positive. So 
we hit a one visceral. We try it again. It resets. We're already at a two. Three. As it finishes its sixth roll. I'm not sure what causes this bug, but hopefully it will be sorted out by the developers as the game progresses with its electricity. Anything that you want to wire from this contraption can be wired from the pass through of the counter above to whatever degree you'd like. As with any video, I welcome you guys to join in the Discord as well as the brand new server. I thank you guys for your continued support as we recently broke 1,000 subscribers, and I wish you guys the best day. Thank you.